So as the results rolled in in New Hampshire, we got three major announcements. Three 2020 candidates would be suspending their campaigns. We learned that Michael Bennett would be dropping out of the race. I guess that the uh, James Carville endorsement didn't help him. Shocker. And uh, reportedly, Deval Patrick will announce that he's ending his campaign tomorrow. Now, the biggest one and the only one that I actually care about and feel sad about is that Andrew Yang announced that he is suspending his campaign. Now, it was a little bit shocking to me, or a lot shocking, I should say, because like the results only started to roll in. I think we were at like 8 to 10% of precincts reporting in New Hampshire, and he announced that he was ending his campaign. So I think he probably was ready for this and just wanted to see if he would perform well, and he he ended it. And um, out of all of the candidates who I don't support, Andrew Yang is probably the one that I'm the most sympathetic towards because like he was genuine. He was authentic. He was an anti-establishment candidate and he's just a nice guy. Like he'll always have a special place in my heart because he's one of the only candidates besides Mike Gravel that actually came on my show. So just for personal narcissistic reasons, that's why, you know, Andrew Yang will always hold a special place in my heart. And even if I disagree with him vehemently on certain policies, he did bring a lot of ideas to the table. You know, drug decriminalization, uh, voting at 16. He brought a lot of policies that I genuinely support. And even though I don't support his implementation of UBI, I think that just the fact that he got us talking about this and automation in and of itself is incredibly valuable. So, you know, what he brought to this campaign, it really was a breath of fresh air, and it was nice to see Andrew Yang back at that debate after hearing from all of these corporate stooges again. It, you know, it's just, he really will be missed, and I say this as a Bernie Sanders supporter. Now, I have a message to all of the Yang gang. Now, first and foremost, let me just say that this is a message to you, not as a Bernie supporter, but as a human being, because I know that currently you're probably really irritated because a lot of Bernie supporters are jumping down, jumping down your throats to try to get you to, you know, jump on the Bernie bandwagon. But this is just me saying to you as a human being what I'm going to tell you, because I feel like I've been in a similar situation. And look, I genuinely hope that you jump on board and we can team up and take on the establishment together and that you support Bernie Sanders. But, you know, I've seen kind of split split results here. You know, some people on Twitter say they're going to support Bernie, who were Yang supporters. Others say, nope, I'm never supporting Bernie. Um, and I don't really know overall where Yang's base of support will go when it's all said and done because Yang brought a lot of new people into the process. And if those people were never mobilized before, they may just check out without Andrew Yang. So understand that I'm not telling you this to be patronizing, but I just want to, because I care about Andrew Yang as a person and a candidate, I want to explain to you my position because I was in a similar position. All of Bernie supporters in 2016 were in a similar position where Bernie Sanders dropped out and like, I don't remember Bernie Sanders officially dropping out. I may be misremembering it, but we basically found out that Bernie ended his campaign when he endorsed Hillary Clinton. So it was like a double gut punch, right? He dropped out and endorsed this person who just rigged the process against him. Um, and it hurt really, really bad. So just as human beings, like, I truly you know, empathize with you because I've been in that predicament before. And a lot of Yang supporters are probably former Bernie supporters. So you may already know, and this is a, you know, two times in a row you're having to deal with this. But if you haven't been there before as a Bernie supporter, let me just tell you this. I never thought that Bernie Sanders would run for president again. Like when he was done in 2016, I thought it's over. Like we're never going to get a Bernie presidency. And like, it almost sent me into a depression. Like I was genuinely depressed for days and um it was hard to get out of that like because when you believe in a candidate so much you kind of stake your hopes and dreams on that individual so when that candidate's campaign is over like everything that you kind of hoped for and dreamed about just comes crashing down and there's this like giant hole that you don't know how to fill after that right so i i totally understand where you are but four years later Bernie is running again. So as a Bernie supporter, what I say to the Yang supporters is that, look, Andrew Yang is very young, a lot younger than Bernie Sanders. So if we get a second chance at Bernie, I can assure you, you will get a second chance at electing Andrew Yang. I, I assure you, he's not going anywhere. He's young and he built up a movement and 
he can harness that in any way he wants to. Will he run again? Possibly. Could he win next time? It's very, very possible. Will he choose to run for the Senate or harness that energy in some other way? Yes. But what I want you to know is that he's not going anywhere. So everything that was built by the Yang gang and with Andrew Yang, that's not just going to perish. It's not just going to dissipate and evaporate into thin air. Like all of Bernie's support and enthusiasm, it reemerged in 2019 when he announced that he's running again. So I have no doubt that the same can be true for Andrew Yang. And again, let me stress, I'm not doing this to be patronizing and to try to butter you up to jump on board the Bernie bandwagon. Again, you're welcome. We would love to have you. But I know that realistically speaking, you know, these primaries get dirty and a lot of people just aren't going to support Bernie Sanders. But just from a human perspective, like understand that this isn't over for your candidate. And what Andrew Yang managed to accomplish with regard to elevating UBI that's going to remain in political discourse. I mean, think about this. We were debating a federal jobs guarantee versus universal basic income on a national debate stage. And that's because of Andrew Yang and Bernie Sanders. So both of our candidates kind of, you know, we really influenced the discourse. And Andrew Yang wouldn't have been able to get that far without all of the momentum. Now, again, I disagree with him on a lot of policy positions. However, do I believe that Andrew Yang, unlike a lot of these people like Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar, genuinely wants to fix America? Yes, I absolutely believe that. And you can't even doubt for a second that his supporters, uh, you know, weren't also committed and authentic and they just genuinely want to fix the country. So I absolutely respect that. Like contrast that with, with Mayor Pete's supporters, like who supports him? Like, do you genuinely believe that there's this urgency to fix America if you're a Pete supporter? I can't imagine it. I, I just can't. A Biden supporter? A Klobuchar supporter? No. I mean, you could say the same for Elizabeth Warren. I think that her supporters actually do want to fix the country, um, even though she's gone down quite a bit in my book, needless to say. But I mean, like, Andrew Yang's support base, they genuinely cared. And we disagree with each other, but that's okay. We have a goal to fix America. We just have different ways of implementing solutions. And I am committed to my vision because I I believe that this is the correct route to take. But you guys have your own and you have the best intentions. And that's what you really have to respect. Like these primaries get super ugly, super, super ugly and toxic sometimes. And, you know, some there are some instances where you just want to step back and take a little bit of a break because mentally this really takes a toll on you. So, um. My message, ultimately, in closing to the Yang Gang is uh, take time. Like, if you need to, don't, like, look at politics, take a week or so off, play some video games, because this shit is tough. Like, we're we're human beings, and, you know, during election season, we kind of, like, try to transform ourselves into machines, and we just, we go, and we go, and we go, and it's all just automatic. Like, we don't stop to think, I'm a human being. I need to maybe just take a break and play some basketball or do something, walk my dog. Like, we don't take the time for self-care, and that is super important. Um, so, look, nothing but love and solidarity to Yang Gang. I know that not all of them will jump on board the Bernie bandwagon, and that's fine. Uh, whatever your decision is, I respect it. I, I honestly do, and I mean that, because, like, what I saw with Andrew Yang was passion. Like, people loved Andrew Yang, and I understand why, as someone who wasn't an Andrew Yang supporter. I get it. So um, I actually genuinely do feel bad about Andrew Yang. But when it comes to uh, Michael Bennett and Deval Patrick and their combined like five supporters, they can all eat shit and die. But the Yang gang, we're cool. I fuck with you. <laughs> and I'll leave that there.